Okay, protein is a really useful tool for achieving a weight loss goal, but you're actually likely not eating enough. And not eating that protein can increase your hunger levels, decrease your muscle mass, and make it harder to achieve a weight loss goal. And a lot of times it just comes down to having no idea what it looks like for how much protein you actually need. I've shared in the past a video on how you can calculate your protein needs, which I'll have linked down description below. But today I'm going to be sharing 10 real life examples of what 30 grams of protein looks like. So you can kind of eyeball it and get a better idea of how much you actually need to be eating at each meal. If you're new here, my name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition, human performance. On my channel, I teach you the science back tips and strategies to help you achieve your weight loss and wellness goals. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Okay, so we can see on food tracking apps like Chronometer that 30 grams of protein from chicken is equivalent to about 3.5 ounces of cooked chicken. So let's get weighing. That is dirty. I'm developing my own protein powder right now and there was just protein powder dust all over this. I'm going to be covering plant-based, vegetarian options, as well as omnivorous protein sources. So regardless of your preferences, there will be something in this video for you. So I don't expect you to be weighing everything. I'm doing this so that you can get an idea of what this actually looks like. Just a little FYI. Okay, so I have some cooked chicken right here. That is 3.2, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that's roughly 3.5 ounces. Now to see what it looks like in a cup. Okay. So you can see it's not fully packed in, but if you're loosely packing in some torn chicken, it's going to be about two thirds, maybe three quarters of a cup. This one chicken is making it look like it's higher. There you go. If you're doing something like rotisserie chicken, it's going to be about three quarter cup for about 30 grams worth of protein. Okay, next we have eggs, which can be a little bit tricky because eggs are a really great source of protein, but each egg is not very high in protein. So it's roughly going to be about six grams per egg or six grams of protein per egg, which means that you would need to eat just from eggs, five eggs, which is a lot of eggs to eat in one sitting. And I'm not really sure that a lot of people really enjoy eating that many eggs in one sitting. I know a lot of my clients typically feel best with about three eggs. I'm kind of in that same boat. So what I recommend is pairing eggs with another protein source. So like one to two ounces of cheese is a good way to offset it. But if you're just having eggs, you'll need about five of them to achieve that 30 gram goal. And we're using 30 grams as a reference. It's not something that every person person needs to be having. Some people need less, some people need more. So if you do want to calculate your protein needs, definitely make sure you check out my video. I'll, that I'll have linked down description below. The next one we have is tempa or tempeh. Not really sure on how to say it. This is a fermented soy product. So if you're plant-based, this is actually one of the better options to be having for a complete source of protein. So depending on the brand, you're going to need about five and a quarter ounces of tempa in order to get 30 grams of protein. So let's measure that out and see how it looks. Here's a big old brick of tempa. <laughs> so I'm just going to tear it and start adding the tempa on, see how much we need. Okay, more than that. Okay, so this is a little over, but this was a full standard brick of tempa. I used a good portion of it. I used probably about three quarters of the tempa, which makes sense because it was an eight ounce package. So if you're just getting it from a package that's eight ounces, which from what I've seen, a lot of them are going to be about eight ounces, you're going to want roughly three quarters of the tempa to get a full 30. Oh my gosh, just breaking things. To get a full 30 grams of protein. Okay, next we have protein powder. So whether you're using a plant-based or an egg or a whey-based, the first thing you need to do is check how many grams of protein are in each serving. So typical serving size will be about 20 grams of protein per serving, but next level of complexity, not too complex, just something to consider. You need to see how many of the scoopers equals one serving. So for whey protein powder, it's often going to be two of these scoops of the provided scoop that they give. For plant-based, it's often one. And for egg base, it's usually going to be one, sometimes two, just depends on the brand. So given that protein powders are going to be about 20 grams of protein, usually if a serving is one scoop, then you'll need one and a half scoops. And that'll be about 30 grams. If a serving is two scoops, then you'll need three of these scoopers to hit 30 grams. Got it? Good. Okay, so when we're looking at beef, I don't have any cooked beef right now, so I'm just showing you some raw beef. You can see on their nutrition facts that four ounces is going to provide around 21 grams of protein. Now this is because it's measuring it raw. When you cook ground beef or any protein for that matter, it is going to lose a lot of water, usually about 25%. So four ounces of cooked ground beef is going to have around 30 grams of protein. So most people aren't just pre-buying ground beef that's already cooked rather. So if you're making like a pound of protein and you want to 
to try and estimate what's going to be about 30 grams worth of protein. What I usually recommend is aiming for more of a third of a pound. So just cutting this into thirds to help compensate for that water loss and to make sure that you're actually getting that true 30 grams of protein. So if you're serving a dinner for three people, then you could probably do one pound and that would be perfect. Okay, so for another plant-based option, there's split yellow peas, which tends to be one of the higher diaz score proteins, which means that your body absorbs more of the protein. It's still not nearly as good as like fermented soy, but if you are looking for variety, it is one that could provide a little bit more protein than some of the other plant-based options. Now, I don't have any split yellow peas. I do have some lentils. <laughs> so I'm going to use this as a visual just so you can kind of eyeball it. But one thing to note is that if you are very carb sensitive, you're likely not going to want to get most of your protein from something like yellow peas because in order to get 30 grams worth of protein from the split yellow peas, you would need to eat about two cups worth of cooked split yellow peas to hit 30 total grams of protein. And that's not even accounting for amino acids. And that two cups of yellow peas will also come packaged with about 38 grams of net carbs. So if you're really carb sensitive, that's not going to be a great option for you. If you're not, here's what it looks like. Now usually when you cook something like peas or lentils, it's going to double in size when you cook it. So if you're cooking it from scratch, then you'll want about a full cup of the peas or lentils raw. And that'll expand to about two cups cooked. Another really great protein is actually Greek yogurt. Now I make my own homemade Greek yogurt, but you'll need about one and a half cups to get 30 grams worth of protein, which honestly, if you're used to using yogurt, definitely measure this out just like once or twice because, because one and a half cups of Greek yogurt is probably way more protein joke way than you probably are currently eating. So let's take a look at that. And we're still not even there yet. So that's just about one and a half cups of Greek yogurt. It's a lot, a lot of Greek yogurt. If you don't want as much Greek yogurt, but you still want to have it as your main protein source, you could always use less, like one cup of Greek yogurt, for example, and add in a protein powder, just stirring it in to help boost the protein content further without having to eat like this much yogurt. This is a lot of yogurt. If you like that much, great. But just know that in order to get that 30 grams, you need one and a half cups of Greek yogurt. Now, a lot of seafood will really range, but typically for salmon, it's going to be about four, four and a half ounces that you'll need cooked for 30 grams of protein. Same goes with shrimp. Now, I thought I got enough shrimp. Clearly, I didn't. So this is raw shrimp and it's only 4.2 ounces. So if this were cooked, that would be roughly what you want to get 30 grams of protein. But remember you lose about 25% of the water weight here. So this actually needs to be closer to six ounces. So if you were to be measuring it raw, then you would wanna make sure you're getting about an additional one and a half ounce of shrimp to hit that 30 grams. So these were, I think, jumbo shrimp, right? Yeah, and about seven of the jumbo shrimp got me to about 4.2, four and a quarter ounces. So you might wanna get closer to 10 shrimp if you're looking for that 30 grams of protein. Of course, assuming they're jumbo and not tiny. Okay, so cheese is actually a really great source of protein as well. But if you were to just eat cheese and try and get 30 grams of protein, you would need to eat a lot of cheese. So that's why I usually like to pair cheese and eggs together. They're a nice complement, obviously. Cheesy eggs, great. But they also both help to boost each other's protein content without having to eat a ton of eggs or a ton of cheese. But just so you can get an idea of what this looks like, to get 30 grams worth of protein just from cheese, you would need about four and three quarters ounces of cheese. So I'm going to use cheddar as an example here. I get like really big things of cheddar at Costco. I love cheesy eggs. Let's see if I can guess this on the first try. Let's see right here, maybe. Okay, that's way too much. <laughs> okay, almost right on point. But just so you guys can see, this is a really big block of cheese. This is a ton to be eating at one sitting. Not to say that you couldn't, but most people don't wanna just sit down and eat like a brick of cheese. This is why pairing about a quarter of this, which would be maybe a slice of like sandwich or deli meat cheese, and pairing that with eggs can help to complement each other both. And then one of my personal favorites is actually cottage cheese. So if you get one of these larger containers, which is a pound, so 16 ounce container, you can see that it has four servings and each serving has 14 grams of protein. If you were to just eat half of this, then you would be getting about 28 grams of protein, which essentially is in the margin of error anyway. That's actually what I like to do and it's what I'm going to be doing right now. I'll eat half of one of these containers of cottage cheese for one meal. I'll usually pair it with like peanut butter or blueberries and then I'll just save the other half for another day. So it's a little bit shy of that 30 grams, but it's a really easy way to guesstimate that you're getting at least in the ballpark range of 30 grams of protein if that's what you're aiming for. Now you might need a little bit more than 30 grams of protein or a little bit less than 30 grams, depending on your needs. I do have a really 
really simple video that helps you calculate your protein needs. Make sure you check that out next with this video right here. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love the science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. I come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.